The Boston Bruins and Toronto Maple Leafs were two teams that went into last season with big-time Stanley Cup winning aspirations, yet both of their seasons ended in bitter disappointment. So today we're going to take a little side-by-side -side view of what the Maple Leafs and the Bruins have done so far this offseason to see if they can get back in Stanley Cup winning contention. Hey everybody, welcome into Clearing the Benches, your one-stop shop for awesome hockey content. If you go ahead and hit your subscribe button, we will do our very best to keep you in the loop in what's going on in the world of hockey. So let's start off with the goaltenders. And in my opinion, after the Allmark trade uh, to Ottawa and they got Corpusalo as part of the return, I think personally that is a step back in the goaltending spot for the Bruins. Everybody knows that Corpusalo's had a very rough last couple of years in both LA and in Ottawa. It just seems like his game has really just come apart. Now, maybe now that the you know Bruins have got uh, an improved defense, they're not going to be rolling out guys like Shattenkirk in big situations, and they've got a better defensive structure in front of them than he's had in the past. I'm thinking... He will improve, but it's going to be, it will it be enough, you know, that it's going to really hold when the uh, Bruins need it, and that's going to be in the playoffs. When we look at what the Maple Leafs have done in goal, in my opinion, they definitely have an upgrade. Uh, Matt Murray, you know, Murray had good numbers when he was in Pittsburgh in the playoffs, and then they bought in Anthony Stolarz, fresh off of Stanley Cup. Uh, Stolarz last year went 16-7. and seven. He had a 2.03 goals against and a 9.25 save percentage. I personally believe that this could be a 1-1-A situation for the Leafs and Nets with Joe Wall and Anthony Stolarz as 1-A. It's going to be a very, very interesting training camp with these three all fighting for what they consider to be the number one spot. Uh, I think one of these goalies is going to get about 45, 50 games, while the backup's probably going to get somewhere, you know, 35, 40 games. But as far as the Maple Leafs, they definitely uh, addressed an area that they needed to. And in my opinion, they upgraded in the goaltending uh situation so let's look at what the boston bruins did on defense and they made a big splash with this one and they bought in very rough and rugged nikita zadarov we know he played for calgary and vancouver last year and in my opinion this is a big time we can almost say the word huge upgrade for the bruins now you got really two stacked uh defensive pairs and you know Depends on who they're going to want to pair up with each other. Uh, but when I see Hampus, Lindholm, and McAvoy, I think offense. When I see Zadarov and Carlo, I think defense. So I think one of these guys, uh, either McAvoy or Lindholm, is going to be playing with Zadarov. And it's going to be a situation where Carlo and Zadarov are going to just be out there to kind of play the middle of the ice while these other two guys roam and they look for more offensive output from the back end. When we look at what the Toronto Maple Leafs have done on their back end, I also think that this is a significant upgrade for them. However, the one thing that concerns me about the three guys that they bought in is that they are all older players. They've got a lot of mileage, and a couple of them have been banged up as of late. But when you just look at it on paper, they did an excellent job. Chris Tanev was obviously one of the top defensemen that was coveted both at the trade deadline and now in free agency. And we all saw how well he played in the playoffs. And I think he's going to continue that in Toronto. And I think just as a whole, uh, when you bring in guys like uh, Tanev and Yakinpa, and now, you know, even OEL, Oliver Ekman Larson, I think that, you know, the talent wise on paper, big time significance. But again, some of these guys, you know, Tanev, I think, is about 34, 35. I believe uh, Hawk and Paz right around 30, maybe 31. And Oliver Ekman Larson, I believe, is in his early 30s as well. Uh, when I look at Hawk and Paz, I think, you know what? Uh, he's very well rounded. The guy's uh, a plus 34 in his career. So he's going to do what the Leafs are looking for, and he's going to take care of business 
on the back end as well. And he is also the very coveted right D shot. So as far as the defense goes for Toronto, I definitely think this is an upgrade for them. And I think it's a big step in the right direction. They're building their team from the goaltender out. They know they're loaded up front. They don't need any more, you know, offensive players that are going to really, you know, light it up for them. They got all that taken care of. Where they needed to take care of was on the back end and between the pipes. And in my opinion, they did that. Now, when we go over to the forward position, uh, first of all, Toronto only had the one signing, and that was they bought Max Domi back. I think that was a good decision. You know, I think it basically came down to Domi or Bertuzzi. My opinion, ever since he left Detroit, Bertuzzi's career has taken, in my opinion, a significant step back, especially in the offensive department. He seems like now he's more just of an agitator, uh, where he was really, when he was playing with Larkin, he was really starting to develop into a goal-scoring threat, and it seems like that's gone away for Bertuzzi. Now, when they have Domi, listen, they saw what they had with him in the playoffs, and they liked it enough that they said, hey, come on back, we're going to bring you in, and we're going to add you to the mix with these other guys, and we're going to see how it goes. Um, when we look at what Boston did up front, and they did some significant moves themselves, they bought in Elias Lindholm, one of the most coveted centers that was in free agency. I was a little surprised when I looked at his numbers from last year and I found out that Lindholm only had 45 points in 76 games. Uh, so if the Bruins are going to really, you know, be in the mix this year, they're going to need Lindholm to be in like around the 80, 85 point mark. It just seems to me like he never fit in or he never got comfortable uh, in Vancouver after the trade there. And it just seemed like he just... He was a little out of sorts. He just never got comfortable. Another guy they brought in was Mark Kostelik. They got him in the Ottawa trade for Allmark. And I'm not going to say that he's Jake DeBrusk light, but they play a very similar game. And Mark Kostelik has got some big time wheels to him. He can really skate. This kid uh, is a big kid. He's very physical. He for sure is not afraid to drop the gloves. And I think within the first month, hell, coming out of training camp, this kid could already be a fan favorite in Boston. When they see what kind of game this kid brings, they are going to fall in love with him. Now, again, he's going to be third, fourth line. So it's not like, you know, he's going to be big time producing. But every time he's out on the ice, the fans are going to know it and the other team is going to know it. Another guy they brought in was Vinny Letary. Uh, him and also Max Jones. I look at these two signings and I don't know. I'm kind of shaking my head. Vinny Letary's got 27 points in 129 games. And I think the Bruins are now going to be like his fourth, maybe even fifth uh, team in his career. And in his career, he's a minus 38. So, um... When you're putting them out there, you know, I don't know if you're going to put them out there on a checking line. Maybe you're going to mix them in with some other guys that could insulate him. And, you know, maybe he has a more improved season as far as his numbers go. But right now, to me, he's just a body out there. Max Jones is just pretty much the same thing. I look at him and you just kind of scratch your head and you ask yourself why. He's got 62 points in 258 games, and in his career, he's a minus 44. So, you know, you want guys that are on checking lines. You know, you look at the Islanders, they had Clutterbuck, Martin, and Sezikis. Those guys were always pluses. Uh, that's what you're looking for when you bring in these guys that are going to be in your third and fourth lines. And when I look at Letary and I look at Jones, you know, minus 38, minus 44. That is not what the doctor ordered. That is for sure. So overall, uh, and in summary, I'm going to say so far this offseason, I'm going to give the Toronto Maple Leafs a grade of B minus. They definitely addressed their needs, but they did it with some older players that could get banged up quicker. Uh, they could miss some significant time if that happens. But if all of these players play up to their potential, especially, you know, Hawk and Pa, Oliver Ekman, Larson, you're definitely going to see the Maple Leafs making a deep run in the playoffs next year. 
When I look at what the Bruins have done so far this offseason, I'm going to give their grade a C. Uh, and that all really depends on Elias Lindholm, if he can get it going offensively, if he can become a number one center for them, you know, maybe a number two guy, but definitely somebody that's producing on the power play. Uh, somebody who's going to get you Again, like around 75 to 85 points is what they're going to be looking for out of Lindholm this year. And also, it's going to really depend on if Nikita Zadarov brings that nasty attitude that he had uh, more in Vancouver that I saw. And, you know, I think, again, he would be a great fit. He's going to be a great fit uh, with guys like McAvoy and Carla Lindholm. Now you got three really big guys and a guy with some real offensive uh, skills to him. But, again, I think bringing in Zadarov is going to let one of these two guys be a roamer and be like a fourth forward. But, again, I am going to give the Boston Bruins grade so far this offseason a C. So that's going to do it for this video. We did Boston and Toronto side by side. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Let me know if you think these guys, uh, these teams are going to make any more moves in the offseason. They're going to bring anybody else in. They're going to move anybody else out. If you could, please put that down in the comment section. If you could, hit your like button. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.